Hello adventurers! If you missed our last couple videos, we explored an abandoned nuclear missile base, and on the next video we explored a cold water geyser and found a pretty awesome rock. So check those videos out, and now you join us later that night as we spend the night near the abandoned missile base. Hi, I'm Liz, and my other half is Charlie, and we are exceptionally frugal. That's why we're traveling the U.S. in our minivan Opal, paving the way for others to save it. Traveling around the budget can be quite fun. We love the outdoors, and we'll try to avoid cities, do lots of hiking, and have a strange obsession with rocks. So hop in the van, and let's see what kind of adventure we can find. We're, we're actually in part of the nuclear test facility, uh, just not the nuclear part. On the outskirts. Yeah. It's a nice view and uh, good solid reception. So, yeah, great place. Yeah. And we're going for a walk now. So that's the that's the bunker building. That's the building we drove through. Ooh, rocks. <laughs> nice river rock. Cool rocks found in that river rock. Beautiful bands. This is greenish. There's some pretty cool stuff in here that Liz has found. Um, I was thinking that if this was built back in the 60s or 40s, there was no regulations about where you could get your rock. And government probably got top dollar rock. So this is probably from some nice riverbed or something. Probably find some cool stuff you go through this whole thing. Catching the moonrise. So sometimes we got to do our part to keep our public lands public and uh, pick up a few pieces of garbage. So I'm going to clean up the site a little bit. These are burkettes, not dookies. <laughs> Aww. You have a butterfly. Or is it a cabbage moth? Philip in Wellington, Utah. 379 a gallon, put in 3462. Welcome to Helper, a historic community. Well, looks like in the town of Helper, they have this free museum to check out. It's a Western and mining museum. Let's see what this building is. You think it's an outhouse? Ah, oh, it's locked. Darn it. Now that's a chainsaw. <laughs> Dang. This here is a long wall machine. And the crazy thing about it is it can remove a block of coal up to a thousand feet wide and two miles long. Can you imagine that? That's an old ore, ore cart. 
doesn't say how old exactly, but I bet you that's 1800s. We pulled up to this park because it's got bathrooms, water, power, garbage cans, but the bathroom's locked and the water ain't working, but we can use the garbage. Charlie's going to test the power. There is power. There is power. All right. It's not a total loss. There's also these weird bugs. Do they have orange on their backs? Yeah. What is it? I don't know. A box elder bug. And it is a North American species of true bug. It is found primarily on box elder trees as well as maple and ash trees. There appears to be a cemetery down here. Somewhat unkept. It looks really interesting. So what are we going to do? We're going to check it out. Notice, grave sites, some are sinking in. Walking hazard, watch your step. Alrighty then. Definitely coal. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of coal there. This is a memorial for all the coal miners. It says, look, FYI, inside. Unlock. What is it? Opened Welcome. in 1891. Wow, that's an old cemetery. Look at people have put in coins here and here. Oh, there's a poem I must read. Will you roll beautiful footage? A Coal Miner by Helen Thomas Adkins. Down below the mountain he has dug, trying to make a living for the ones that stayed up above. Deep in the dark, fighting the gas and the dust, knowing at any time his body could be crushed with another swing from the hammer, another rock he must bust. Mostly on his belly he did crawl, praying to God, please don't let this mountain fall. And at the end of the day, as he slowly rolls toward the light, it is one more day that the Lord has spared his life. And tomorrow will begin another fight. And as he slowly goes underground far from my sight, I pray, dear God, that you will watch over him and bring him back to me in the evening light. This is an interesting point of entry for the cemetery. And he made it. This is a cool cemetery. They all died in 1924. I wonder what happened. Peter Kerich, 1884 to 1924. And Thomas Trow, 1890 to 1924. Again, more people that died in 1924. Like that whole section right there is March 8th, 1924. It turns out that 1924 was actually a very tragic year in the town of Castlegate, Utah. While 171 men and children were working in a mine when a series of violent explosions occurred, killing every last one of them. 
Later, it was determined that the cause of the initial explosion was when a fire boss was investigating gas near the roof of a mine and his carbide lamp went out. He attempted to relight it, but when his match sparked, it lit the gas and coal dust, instantly causing a chain reaction of explosions heard a mile away. The force was so powerful that it launched a mining car and telephone poles and other equipment clear across the canyon. Two weeks prior, the Utah Fuel Company had laid off many of the unmarried miners and ones without dependents during a period of reduced orders for coal. This left behind 415 widows and fatherless children. The death benefits from the Utah Workmen's Compensation Fund, established seven years prior, provided $5,000 per dependent and paid out just $16 per week for six years, a small price to pay for such a great loss in a very small town in America. A light from our household has gone. A voice that we loved is still the place is vacant in our home, which never can be filled. That is so sad. Edna Fish, born January 5th, 1908, died August 15th, 1908. Well, that was sad. That was sad. We uh, just happened to stumble across this. We, we didn't even know it was here. Um, some guy was tailgating me, so I got off the main road and just took this road. And I was like, ah, let's see what's down this road. And happened to be a, a cemetery about a, a tragic mine explosion. 171 people. It's a lot of people to go at once, especially in a small community. Yeah, and apparently uh, in 1918, this community had a flu epidemic as well and killed off a bunch of people that are in there, so. Yeah, lots of babies in there, unfortunately. Yeah, it's pretty sad. Yeah. So, no wonder this is a huge coal mining area. I see Those three different lines of coal. Pretty much all these black bands are, like especially that one right there, that's solid coal. That's cool. That's crazy. This is a coal rich area. Well, this is the biggest city we've been to in well over a month. We are in Spanish Fork, Utah, on our way to see our son who lives in Provo. We are trying to get to the beach of Lake Utah over there. We saw some cars down there driving on the gravel bar, so monkey see, monkey do. This is Lincoln Point, Utah Lake. Wow, this is really beautiful. Look how tall this grass is.
That is gorgeous. Oh, wow. That is a shot. Yeah. That is so beautiful.